Hi, so I've just seen um, there's a 360 kind of image AI generator that enables you to make 360 images for environments. I've um, just seen here, it says creating 3D worlds has never been easier. You can join a wait list, so it's going to be 3D mesh exporting. So whatever we're going to do here, it may make a, a, an actual 3D mesh in the future. But for now, it's really just an image. You can kind of give an illusion of 3D by exporting the depth map as well. But we're not going to do that today because I don't have the fuller version. And and you can go straight to the text prompt. So here I've put the sky above the port. It was the color of television tuned to a dead channel. Neuromensa. And you've, you know, and that's just um, a quote from William Gibson's Neuromancer. And it's interesting if you want to check out the um, color that you think the dead channel is because it sort of depends on how old you are, basically. Um, you can choose different styles. I like to experiment with the, the different ones like the art mix but tech noir i don't know about you but i think this style has been done to death and when i read things like neuromancer and duanger's dream of electric sheep that of course blade runner was based on i saw a completely different aesthetic to the blade runner kind of aesthetic but there's nothing wrong with the blade runner aesthetic but this this kind of look now is being done to death if you go to art station everyone's doing kind of blade runner looking kind of tech stuff, um, Ghost in the Machine. I, I'd like to see something, if I ever wanted to remake a film like Blade Runner, no, sorry, Do Andrew's Room of Electric Sheep or Neuromancer, I'd probably set it in modern day with a few different things. So I'm going to go to London in a few weeks and in the autumn, I mean, today near Glasgow, it's very rainy, so it's, it's very like the dead channel of a TV from the 80s, for example when I grew up, but you know, I'm gonna to go to London, it's gonna get dark and you know, you walk around things like the Lloyds building. It's, you could almost base a cool film on that now without too much, you know, like sickly kind of over the top stuff, which can get boring, I think. I like the sort of, the minimalism. So let's just generate this, it just takes a while. And these lines I've just drawn in with the pen. You can do it more detailed, but again, this gives you some sort of you know, uh, loose outline of what you're going to make. Let's check it's still recording. You're going to see it's three out of five. So if you haven't signed in and paid, you only get a few goes with this. So if you want to get something, just try and keep it tight. Okay, so that's actually, I like that one because the last one I generated was a bit not so good. I don't really like the characters. That looks very you know, run of the mill, but there's the port, the sky, is the sky, sky color of television? I don't know. And it sometimes flashes up the original drawings. I actually quite like this one better than the last one. And it's almost got some sort of almost Chinese, Japanese writing up there. So that's good. And of course you could also take this into a 3D, a 2D editor like Photoshop or Affinity Photo and paint, air, you know, paint the 360 environment to get other things. So now let's sit, download it. It doesn't download the green, by the way. That's all gone when you download it. And so you've got a, if you've paid for the version, you've got a, a depth map feature that allows you to get 3D from this as an illusion. But it looks like they're going to bring in full on 3D with the sign up, and which I showed you, um, which is, um, where's the sign up? Anyway, I showed you the sign up, didn't I? I'll look on the video to see if I did. But let's just download this. See, here it is, it's, it's saying sign up for the waiting list for the 3D one. Anyway, let's just click on JPEG. Should do that. So it's downloaded there, that's good. And now I'm gonna to go to Blender on this one. And you can see here, this is an HDRI setup. And I'm just on the, um, the viewport shading material view preview before I go to the top one. And you can see here that I've set up an HDRI here an HDRI structure in the shaders. So if you haven't used Blender, you know, you can obviously get into it, but in the shader editor, the world shader editor, I've set up like a way to control the actual environment map. So basically what an environment map does, it lights the scene and it, you know, reflects up here. So in, in the material preview, this scene is actually just, you know, used in Blender to show us quickly before, without having an actual image. But let's just go, see, I've got the image already. This is an image I made previously. So let's go to the top view now and see how that's looking. Okay, so that's looking good. If I go right up there, it's got a watermark on it, obviously, because, you know, it's, it's worth paying for this if you need to use something like this, though. Um, so that's, I'll just take off the, um, the overlays. And you can see that that looks pretty good already. And I can 
just get um, change the surface of the material on the swimmer's head. So that swimmer's head, by the way, it's for a project I'm sort of working on. But I, I'll just change the subsurface. But um, it's really just the face I'm printing out as a guide for a sculpture. I was going to thinking of making swimmer's sculpture, but uh, it's got kind of boring. So I'm just going to use the face and make my own kind of expressive thing. And the clay goes around it. You know, so the face is really good because it gives you a sort of structure to work with the sculpture. So sculptors have done this throughout the ages to, is to have guides and things like that. Right, so let's go to the one we just made. So it's called Tech. Where is it? Tech. It's this one. It should be this one. So again, you can see that that's looking pretty good. In a scene, just a simple scene with kind of reflectivity on the heads. And that's the HDRI structure. I think, oh no, because what I did is I pasted it in, so I've got two world output world outputs. So let's delete that one, and that's great. That's the one that we don't need. And here's the structure. So basically it's set up in the way that we, the main way that we can use this is we can rotate it on the um, Z, and that will rotate the lighting. So as I rotate it, you can see that the lighting on the head is definitely shifting and reacting to the image. So although it's not an HDRI lit environment, it's basically still lighting it somewhat to give a good effect. So that's great. So remember that all the links are in the description and you can go to Blockade Labs to get start to have a few goes on it before you have to pay for it. So I definitely recommend checking out or even buying it if you want to go further with it. And they've obviously got this text to 3D coming very soon. And you could also make depth maps in it to give an illusion of 3D for now. Anyway, so making cities of the imagination have nev has never got easier. But again, it's important to remember that this kind of style, although it looks amazing, it um, sometimes these styles all look the same. So it's really, I think it's a really good idea to sort of push it beyond that. And that's why I'd look at some of the other um, settings in Blockade Labs, such as the different styles and see what you can get from that, which I'm just gonna do anyway. Remember, you can check out the links for Blockade Labs below. And also um, you can check out my Kindle book, which is how to create cities of the imagination available an on Amazon. And that takes you through a whole process of making cities of the imaginations for your games, your stories, your sculptures, your art, using anything from digital to model making, 3D printing, laser cutting, AI, etc. And it's, I'd really recommend buying it. Of course I would. Thank you very much and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.